Hello and welcome to GCS Today here on Channel 21, the program that brings you news and information from Gaston County Schools. I'm Todd Hagens. On today's episode, we talk with Diane Price about our Battle of the Books, Math Masters, and Math Elite competitions. And we meet student Hannah Mullis from East Gaston High School, who was chosen to represent Gaston County Schools at the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair. Joining me on GCS today is Diane Price. She is the director of our Academically and Intellectually Gifted program. Diane, it's great to see you. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Okay, we are focusing on the reading and math related competitions available in Gaston County Schools. So let's start with Battle of the Books. What is Battle of the Books and how does the competition work? Battle of the Books is a program that encourages students to read a variety of books by outstanding authors uh, and young children's literature. At the end of each school year, the North Carolina School Library Media Association releases a new list of books for the upcoming school year, and that will be provided for our elementary and middle school students. That list has about between 15 and 16 books from different genres like historical fiction, biography, adventure, mystery, realistic fiction, and there are different lists for the elementary and the middle school. The AIG department has the privilege and honor to sponsor this Battle of the Books competition. We have it for the elementary level at fifth grade, and then at the middle school level, it is for students in grades six, seven, and eight. And uh, also, Diane, I know that uh, one of your colleagues uh, is responsible for it, but we've extended Battle of the Books also to the high school level. Yes, sir. Uh, at this point, we are collaborating. We just offer our support. We don't actually run that competition. That is under the wheelhouse of the high school um, core, but we support, we send support there to help with that competition as well. Yes, sir. So it's a big competition of the Battle of the Books program. It's big in Gaston County Schools, and we have a lot of students that are involved with, with the program. So let me ask you this. What does it take for a student to be a good Battle of the Books competitor? Oh, well, Mr. Higgins, good competitors, they start early. They obtain those upcoming school year's Battle of the Books list so that they get a head start on reading those books. Then when the teams are formed, they will work with their other team members and they designate experts on specific books for which they may have a connection with the most. But all the while, we encourage them to read as many of the books as possible, of course. And then while reading, they choose those students could keep notes, um, they could draw um, some sketches so that they have a good reference about the main characters, the important events, and the settings for each title. So on the day of the Battle of the Books competition, what is the actual competition like? Is it like a game show or a quiz show? Talk to us about what the competition looks like. Yes, sir. Well, a typical battle is a full day tournament and the students from each of our schools will earn points. So like more like a quiz show by answering the questions about the designated book titles that they've received. Um, it'll begin with a, a beginning of going over the rules and the directions for the day and then the teams progress through different rounds competing against other teams during the battle. And then at the end of the day, those points are totaled to determine a winning team. And at the elementary level, we have recognized the top two winners from two parts of our district. This year, Mr. Hagens, we brought those two area teams together to compete for a grand battle for a district grand champion because we have the opportunity to move those teams on to a regional and a state competition. At the middle school, the champion is determined for that entire district. And then, like I mentioned, both of those teams have, been the, have the ability to move on. And we have, at Chapel Grove and Belmont Middle, have moved on to the statewide battle. And that's typically held in late spring. 
I saw the principal at uh, Chapel Grove recently, and Mitch Allen, he was uh, thrilled to say that his school is the grand champion for Battle of the Books. <laughs> so lots of pride was happening that day for sure. Thank you. So what is the purpose of Battle of the Books, and what do you think a student gains from being involved with Battle of the Books. Mm -hmm. Such a worthy program that's had such longevity in our district, very impressive. Um, the students gain knowledge and enjoyment from reading good books. Uh, they share them with their friends, their parents, teachers. And the big news is, is they have that joy of a day of fun uh, with that academic competition in the battle. So we have talked about reading and books, literacy, now let's focus on math with the Math Masters and the Math Elite competitions. How do these programs work and is there a difference in Math Masters and Math Elite? Yes, sir. Um, math Masters and Math Elite are both, they both provide opportunities for students to compete in the mathematics skills contests. Uh, during the competition, these teams travel from various rooms, competition rooms. They work as a group to solve mathematics problems, um, such as number system, geometry, and more. Uh, each competition within it, they get 15 minutes. For teams, they get to solve up to eight problems, um, and they're competing against other teams, similar to Battle of the Books. We have those points tallied at the end to determine a winner. The difference is Math Masters is at the elementary level for fifth grade students, and Math Elite is at the middle school level for sixth grade students. Now, at the sixth grade level, the topics are a little more challenging to solve, and they include things like algebraic equations, statistics, and probability. So how much does a student have to know about math? to be a champion of math masters or math elite? I, I would like to say that instead of having a particular mathematics background, that what we encourage and what we see, the champions that we get out of the math elite and math masters is that these students have what we call a growth mindset, uh, meaning that they believe their ability can change and improve over time with effort and practice. So these students, they are curious students, Mr. Higgins. Um, they come to us, they're refining their problem solving skills and their higher level thinking. These students ask lots of questions, in fact, and we notice that they apply mathematical um, skills and application to real life situations. And we notice that they do it in creative and challenging ways. And I imagine that a big component of a student's success in Math Masters, Math Elite, Battle of the Books, a big component to that success is teamwork. You said it, Mr. Higgins. And that's one of the things we've noticed has bridged over from our, our classrooms of where they have, they do engage like that as teams and working together. So they're naturally coming to us, but that's one of the big um, preparations that the teams have prior to coming. They, they get many opportunities to work together to come up with that one solution. So these programs make students better readers, and better mathematicians. Totally agree with you. We appreciate that the students have an opportunity to show those skills as well. So what do you enjoy most about being involved with organizing the Battle of the Books and the Math Masters and Math Elite competitions? It is such a blessing. Um, it gives me an opportunity uh, and a chance to be creative and see the ideas turned into a reality. Uh, anytime you see students come together in an academic manner to compete is always an exciting time for our department. Um, events like these um, give our people an opportunity to come together in person. Uh, it creates a much better opportunity for connection across our district. That's what's exciting to see is how they come from all across the district and build relationships. And so when you were at the competition and you were seeing the students engaged in learning and in, in friendly competition, I guess you could say, 
that's all about reading and math. How does that make you feel to see that take place? Yeah, uh, we hear a lot, Mr. Higgins, about competition in sports such as the Olympics and most recently in basketball, March Madness. Um, however, when you see competition in academic pursuits like the reading and math, it has such a positive performance enhancing effect as well. Uh, when they get to come into an academic competitive environment, uh, with students in a healthy manner, we notice that it builds their engagement, the camaraderie that we see among them, the self-esteem, as well as along the day, you're seeing great sportsmanship. I call it something like cooperation. So we see the students cooperating together in the manner of a great competition. Well, we are so proud of our Battle of the Books Math Elite Math, math Masters competition because they are wonderful academic competition for competitions for our students. And I know that our students enjoy them. And I think the coaches and, and people like you, you enjoy the competition as well. Yes, sir. Diane Price, she is the director of our academically and intellectually gifted program. Diane, we appreciate everything that you do for our schools and to help our teachers and our students. And we appreciate you taking time to be with us today here on GCS Today. Thank you. You're watching GCS Today here on Channel 21. Stay with us. We will be right back. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and Joining me on GCS today is Hannah Mullis. She is a student at East Gaston High School and with her is her teacher, Brian Johnson. It's good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Todd, for having us this morning. Okay, Hannah, we want to congratulate you on being chosen for the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair in Atlanta. What a, a, an accomplishment. We are so very proud. So what is it like uh, to know that you are going to represent us at an international competition? It is truly an honor for me. I never would have expected it. And it's kind of like a dream come true for a dream that I didn't even know I had. And um, I they had told me that I was the first person in almost a decade to be chosen to do this. And I don't want to be the last. So I just want to, I think that it's great that I'm able to have peers see this and kind of inspire them to join into research. And Mr. Johnson, you had described the Regeneron event as the Olympics of science fair. So this is a pretty big deal, right? It is for those people who are into science fairs and kind of geek out like I do. Um, we call it ICEP and, and ICEP is big enough that National Geographic decided to do a documentary on it. Um, it was one of the things that we watched uh, after we found out that Hannah had been selected as a finalist in the research class so that they could see it's on Disney Plus and so they could see what it's actually like. Um, I'm not sure if that was a good thing for Hannah to see or not uh, because it kind of showed the magnitude of this event, but it truly is. Um, she'll get to meet people from around the world. She gets research experiences that she'll, she would have never had beforehand. Uh, there's Nobel Prize winners that will be at this to talk with students and uh, I never, I had always hoped that we would have somebody uh, attend ISEF and, and this is, it's just been a, a great, great year. So Hannah, let's talk about your science project. It focuses on hippotherapy. So what is hippotherapy and tell us about your project. Okay, so hippotherapy is basically the use of horses and their movement in traditional therapeutic settings. So occupational, physical, and more recently speech therapies. 
And so I have been volunteering at Shining Hope Farms for about five years now. And I really just wanted to look at horses and the behaviors that they present and specifically looking at stress and discomfort indicating behaviors, which kind of raises some alarm, I know, but it's not saying that the horses are completely uncomfortable and all the time stressed. It's just looking at when they do present behaviors that indicate that something has happened that they didn't really like. And I wanted to see how frequent um, those behaviors were and kind of find a normal like base threshold for how many behaviors a horse should be presenting normally. And I wanted to look at how rider ability, so we have several different people with various abilities ride these horses at Shining Hope every week. And not only that, but we also have people like myself from outside of the therapeutic side of it come to ride the horses to kind of keep them trained. So I wanted to look at how the horse's behaviors are different based on the ability of the person riding them. And that was leading into looking at different therapeutic activities. So what kind of stress is presented when a person is getting on the horse? What kind of stress is presented when you're just walking around? What kind of stress is presented when you're um, doing an activity that requires more movement, which led me to looking specifically at um, activities that require lateral or side to side movement. So like I said, getting on the horse that requires lateral movement. So what I found is that the mount and the rings, which is an activity where the horse is stopped next to a vertical pole and the clients are able to reach over and place rings on the pole. And that also requires lateral movement. And then I had an activity where the horse was led over a bridge and that didn't require any lateral movement from the uh, rider. So it was really just looking at how we can take that information that I gathered and use it to improve hippotherapy and just make things more comfortable for the horses so that they can do their job better and help people. So Hannah, tell us what inspired your science project. How did you come up with the idea for your research and what have you learned from your research? So the inspiration behind my project was from my favorite horse. His name is Lewis. Um, he has always been a bit of a grouch, but over the last several months, and honestly, around the time that I started thinking about doing a research project, he started presenting some behaviors that were out of the ordinary, even for him, where he was aggressive and just didn't seem very comfortable. And so I wanted to look at horses and their stress just to kind of find a way to make things better, not only for him, but for the, the horses that we already have and kind of looking for the future. And that's really where the application of my project comes in is like trying to reduce um, stress within therapy sessions and across the board for therapeutic programs everywhere. And um, I couldn't even begin to tell you what all I have learned, but other than just the horse and hippotherapy aspect, I have also learned so much um, about myself and about how to go about doing a research project, which is so important going into college and going into um, whatever career (laughs) I plan on going into. And so, yes, it's just been life-changing. So Mr. Johnson, let's talk about the role that you have played in helping Hannah collect her research and develop this project. What advice have you given her? Um, Most of the advice that I've given her is to be confident in herself. Um, she, uh, has grown quite a bit over the semester. Uh, I've told her since the very beginning that she has probably one of the best projects I've ever seen. And she never believed me. Um, and she wouldn't believe me and she wouldn't believe me and she wouldn't believe me. Um, and when she found out that she was selected for ISAP, I'm still not sure that she believed me because it just seemed like it wasn't real at that point. Um, It's becoming more real because we have a lot of deadlines that we're trying to make right now. Um, But it's it's one of those things that as she's continued to compete, because while she has made it to the International Science Fair, what um, isn't quite as well known is she's also competed in several other different types of science competitions. 
Um, she's placed second in the state at one competition, uh, another competition called JSHS that is run by the military, the Army, Air Force, and Navy. She placed second in the state there and won a trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico um, over spring break. And so in a couple of weeks, she'll be in New Mexico presenting her research there as well. So she has a national competition there and the Air National Competition the month afterwards. And every time she presents, she's more confident. Um, and, and it's really neat to see that, that development uh, and just to, to see her gain that confidence. So it has to be rewarding for you as a teacher to see one of your students excelling in the way that Hannah is with this project. Yes, um, it's one of the reasons I went into teaching to begin with. Uh, anytime I can watch a student grow to their full potential is all we ever try and do. I mean, that's what we do every single day is, as teachers is we try and just make them the best that they possibly can be. And so to actually be able to see that, there's so many teachers that don't get the opportunity. Um, you know, so many wonderful elementary school teachers that we have and middle school teachers that we have that, um, that work tirelessly every single day to try and make sure that the students are the best version of themselves. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I get to be in high school and sometimes I get to see the fruits of everyone's labor. Uh, and so I just, I'm thrilled uh, to be able to be in this situation. Um, I also am, am thrilled that I got the opportunity to be able to develop a research program here at East Gaston and the inspiration that Hannah has been to other students in that class, uh, knowing that they're just starting their research projects and now they see what is possible and they see what they can do. And I've seen an improvement there years ahead of where they should be or where they would have been or would be if it weren't for Hannah. So as a science teacher, it, it must give you a good um, feeling, a good sense of pride to see your students embracing science, being engaged in research, and showing an interest in learning and discovering. So my background is in education, but also in biology. And as a biologist, I realize how important research is. Everything that we learn in science is a result of experiments that have been done by someone somewhere. And so always in class, I try and tell the students that science is a process. It's not a, a set of facts that we just learn about, it's a process. And so to allow students to be able to experience that, to see it, I really think that it just changes the way that they think about life in general. Uh, they become problem solvers instead of just people who memorize facts. Uh, and I think that's really what we need in education is problem solvers. So Hannah, what are your future plans? Is your research in hippotherapy going to lead to bigger and better things for you? I believe it is. I am going to be attending Appalachian State University in the fall, and I plan on majoring in exercise science um, to go on to do occupational therapy, um, which is something that I have thought about for several years now. So I thought that I had a nice, perfect little plan. And as much as this project has given me, it has also kind of shaken those plans up a little bit because I see that there's so many possibilities for not only continuing this, but looking at things in a different way as I go forward and thinking about doing research and going on even past undergraduate and master's degree. Like there are so many things that I can do now that I think I've always had the ability to do, but I just needed my eyes to be open to that ability. And there's so much I thought that I had a perfect plan, but now I see that I don't have to, and I can take the time over the next couple of years to just figure it out. And I'm sure that you will find a connection between occupational therapy and hippotherapy uh, so that you can have the career uh, that you want. I, I have no doubt about that. Mr. Johnson, would you agree? Oh, I totally agree. She can, she's going to do great. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing 
how far she goes. And I'm sure that she'll hold higher degrees than me one day. Hannah, we want to congratulate you again on being chosen to represent Gaston County Schools at the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair that is coming up in Atlanta, Georgia. And Mr. Johnson, we appreciate all that you have done to support Hannah in this endeavor and all that you do for your students at East Gaston High School. Hannah Mullis and Brian Johnson from East Gaston High School, it is good to see you. Thank you for taking time to be with us here today on GCS Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching GCS Today here on Channel 21. Before we go, we would like to highlight and congratulate this year's first placed winners in the Battle of the Books, Math Masters, and Math Elite competitions. Stay tuned to Channel 21 for the latest news and information from Gaston County Schools. For GCS Today, I'm Todd Hagens. We look forward to seeing you next time.